Welcome back to Pella, Wisconsin. This is Matt with Reed's Custom Food Plots and we're here uh, filming a next part of our Pella project, which is our dozer work. And dozer work here is just getting started. You can see behind me, we've got a small area of land uh, that's been cleared here. And as we've been clearing this little bit of an area, we've already figured out we're gonna have to do some impro improvising based on what we thought we were gonna do here. So as you start thinking about what kind of dozer work are we gonna do and how are we gonna push all of this debris, there's kind of three different options. You can push it all into some neat, tidy piles. Uh, piles that you can kind of ramp up, you can get a blind up on top of. You can kind of see one of those piles going on behind me here. Uh, second option and, and probably the best option from a hunting perspective might be to push all this into a berm on one side, leave some gaps in the berm so the deer could get through it, turkeys could get through it and whatnot. The drawback to that is it's going to be kind of a messy looking uh, thing when you get all said and done. Uh, and the third option would be to push these piles kind of into the middle plant around them for this year and then come back in the winter time, burn all of that debris, um, and then come back next year, push the rest of that debris into just one small pile, and then you'd have the rest of the food pot available to plant. So as we've kind of considered those options, we've looked at this and said, you know, we've got more debris here than we want, um, simply because some of these spruce trees didn't cut out very well. When we started taking them down, some of the tops started breaking off, kind of made a mess, so it left us with a lot more debris than we really wanted. And that pile behind me was kind of the first push that we made at this and thought, boy, this is gonna get pretty big. We're gonna come back this winter, we'll burn all of that off, uh, come back the following year, we'll push the rest of the debris off into one pile, and this will be all cleaned up. But we will be able to make this into a really huntable area, yet for this year, we'll get this all cleaned up. Um, we'll leave a berm down the center, which you'll see at the end of this, and then we'll be ready to go by hunting season. So I think it's important as we're doing the dozer work here in Pella to touch on the topic of what does a finished product look like. I can't tell you how many times we've gotten involved in situations that look just like this where a customer has called us and said, hey, I had logging work done. The logger pulled the stumps for me. They've got it ready to go. He should be able to come and disc it and it'll level it right out. And many times we get there and it looks just like this. And the reality is it's just not possible to do it right that way. So. When you're looking at an area like this, you could bring a disc in here and you'll turn the dirt over, but you aren't gonna move enough dirt to make this a nice, even level planting area. You're gonna need to bring the dozer and blade this off to a nice finished grade. So when we talk about a finished grade, what are we talking about? We, we think that when you're done with the dozer, you should be able to bring an ATV in here and easily drive across this field at 15 or 20 miles an hour and have a nice smooth area to, to drive across. If you tried that on this food plot right now, you're likely gonna break your neck trying to get across here. You're not gonna make it more than, than five miles an hour across here just because of the lumps and bumps and whatnot. And even if you just tried to bring in your farm equipment and disc this, you're not gonna be able to level this out to a point um, that we think is a really good plantable area. So we're gonna show you an example uh, on another food plot here that we dozed uh, a little bit earlier that's nice and smooth, it's ready to go. And you'll be able to see the difference between that and where I'm standing right now. To go back to our video on the introduction to the Pella project, you recall that this is an area uh, that was being established as kind of a staging plot to the bigger field behind me. We've got a box blind uh, that's back here. There was an existing little tiny food plot, but it was really getting grown in by the trees. We came in here, we harvested all that timber, and now we've got to the staging plot in a finished condition. So when you look at this plot being finished compared to the last one that we were looking at, you can see this is much smoother. You could easily drive an ATV across here at 15, 20 miles an hour. You also can see behind me, there's some shiny spots on this field. We actually had just over two inches of rain overnight and there is no water standing in this food plot. Now, yeah, it's wet in a few spots, but we have this graded and leveled to a point where there's no potholes or ditches or anything like that that's holding water. The water's moving its way off. This is gonna be a great plantable area for a long time. Before we get rolling with the planting, I want to touch on a couple things uh, just as cleanup to our last uh, uh, video that we did on the dozer work here. A couple things you might remember, we talked about uh, the debris management that we were kind of struggling with given the volume of tops that were in this. And you can see now behind me, we did actually make a berm uh, out of that debris. That's not going to be a permanent thing. Uh, we are going to burn that off this winter, but we need that to dry down and, and whatnot. So we'll get some snow on the ground. We'll come out here and, and get that burned off uh, later this winter. And in the meantime, we'll be able to plant right around it. Uh, everything will be great. The other thing I want to point out here is as you look at the dirt behind me, this is actually pretty decent dirt and we didn't want to go pushing a lot of this topsoil off into piles and, and losing that fertility uh, just off the dozer blade. So when you get done with a dozer project like this, if it's, if it's been done well, 
you're going to have a lot of the topsoil left, but you're also going to have a fair amount of debris in the food plot for a couple of years. So you can see on the ground around me, there's some root matter and, and sticks and those kinds of things, all to be expected that will go away over a couple of years. Um, but it's necessary so that we don't go and scrape all the topsoil off of this uh, either. So uh, as you look at this, you can see we've got a pretty decent seed bed. We've actually run the disc through this one time already. Um, gotten, it, gotten it worked up and uh, I think the seed bed's gonna be great. And we're gonna go ahead and get this food plot planted. All right, so we're gonna get ready to plant here. I wanna touch on uh, kind of the way we're gonna go at this, the equipment that we're gonna use, the materials that we're gonna use and how it uh, might apply to your situation. So we've got this thing all worked and ready to go. We did get a soil sample um, out of this a couple days ago. Unfortunately, we don't have the results. It's August 19th, there's rain coming. It's time to get this thing in the ground. So we're gonna kind of call an audible here. And we're gonna put down some liquid lime um, on this food plot. Liquid lime is a very quick reacting uh, material. It's gonna last us for this season. It's gonna raise the pH certainly into a range that's going to be acceptable. We're gonna run about three gallons of that on this area uh, that's behind us. We're also going to run triple 19 fertilizer. Uh, we're gonna run triple 19 at a rate of about 100 pounds an acre. Third thing that we're gonna run in here is our seed blend. Now this is our Genesis Select seed blend um, that we blend every single year. Uh, this is a blend of cereal grains and brassicas. So there is gonna be winter wheat, winter rye. Uh, there's gonna be forage rape. There's gonna be forage collards, tillage radishes, and turnips that are in that mix. So um, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna spread uh, the fertilizer. We're gonna spread the seed. We're gonna go ahead and spray that liquid lime on the ground, walk you through those processes. And then when we're all said and done, hopefully later today we get a little bit of rain and this thing will start growing. All right, so let's just take a minute here to touch on the equipment that we're gonna be using to, uh, to plant this food plot. The vast majority of what we plant year in and year out is generally done with a no-till drill and that's kind of become all the rage um, in the food plot world and it's a great way to go at things, but it's not the only way to go at things and in some cases not the best way. When we get a food plot like this that we've just cleared that was an old pine plantation We've gotten all the stumps out here. We've done a really good job leveling it, but there's a lot of root mass and there's some clumpy balls of junk and whatever that's in here yet. We're gonna take the disc on this job and we're gonna run the disc through here, chop that material up, start cutting up those roots to speed that decomposition process uh, and get those out of here. So the disc is gonna be the, the tool of choice uh, as we go in here. Once we've got this disc in work and our seed is spread, then we just simply have to cover it. So there's two, kind of two ways to cover your seed. If you've got wetter, heavier soil, you can simply go and disc it, broadcast your seed, take a cultipacker or a roller, like the one we've got here uh, next to me, roll that seed in and you're gonna be ready to go. Your other option, if you've got lighter, sandier soil, you can certainly cover seed with a disc and you can take a disc just like this one. Um, it's gonna be important that you don't set that disc too deep. You're gonna wanna make sure you have some good control of that disc, but as you go ahead and, and disc it, you're gonna disc that seed into the dirt. It's gonna be a little deeper than it's gonna get with um, the roller or cultipacker, but if your soil is light and it's sandy, that's gonna be okay. It's gonna be a little closer to moisture. It's gonna have an easier time coming out of the ground. And as long as you've done a good job with your disc control um, and not getting that disc in the ground too deep, it's gonna turn out just great. So our seed is all in the ground. It's all been covered up. And the last thing that we're gonna do here is we're going to uh, spray this liquid lime application. So if you're looking at liquid lime, I just wanna give you a quick couple of tips here um, to make this go a little bit better for you. First and foremost, you wanna make sure that you've got an appropriate tip in your sprayer. That means a tip that's got a nice big wide uh, hole in it to make sure that that lime will flow through there the way that you want it to. Second thing to keep in mind is make sure that you take your filters out of your nozzle body so that you don't have filters that are gonna catch that lime and clog up on you. And the last thing is just to remember before you put your lime into the tank, you wanna make sure that that lime is good and agitated. So what we like to do is we'll take it and we'll put it um, in a five gallon pail like this, especially if it's been sitting on the, uh, on the shelf for a while. We'll take a cordless drill and a paint mixer. We'll go ahead and mix that up and pour it in the tank. If the lime is really fresh, you can simply pour the lime in the tank, take your paint mixer right in your tank and mix it in the tank. But either way, just make sure that that lime has been agitated so that it's liquefied and that it will flow just the way that you want it to. All right, so we're pretty excited. We've got uh, the planting done here at the Pella Project and things are, uh, are looking really good. All we need now is a little bit of rain and if I look to the sky out to my west, we might just get that here yet tonight. Coming up, uh, we're gonna be doing some hunting in this area and uh, in that effort, you can look over my shoulder here, you can see we did get some scaffolding uh, that we found at another, another job site and uh, we brought that over here, put that up. We're gonna put a stand on that, uh, on that location 
most of this project was set up for a northwest wind for that stand site. So we're really excited to get that completed. We'll get you some hunting video from that. Hopefully, uh, we'll be able to show you some deer that were harvested from here. But in the meantime, uh, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions or any comments that you'd like to leave, please feel free to do so below, and we'll see you next time.